So I was diagnosed with adult ADHD a few years ago and for a number of years I actually took medication for it. This chaos right here really is indicative of where things have fallen down over the past few years. I made this notebook when I was being vetted to be vice president. So this is the whole situation right here. Welcome to my chaos. I get asked a lot, how do I keep all the balls in the air? And I joke with people, but very seriously say, come into my house and you'll see where it all falls apart. So I have spent a lot of time since I've been out of the White House decluttering my house. And this chaos right here really is indicative of where things have fallen down over the past few years. And it's really interesting because I keep a very neat office, but I can't keep my stuff neat personally always. So I've hired some people to help me get organized, declutter. Um, Derek is very, very neat. So this in his space in the basement is driving him crazy, but he, has been very nice and not said anything about it. And it's not going to take me long to do it. I just won't sit down and do it. But I'm sick of looking at it too. So, some of the, but it's been really cool the things I've been finding as I've been going through this. This notebook was, um, I made this notebook when I was being vetted to be vice president. This is really, this has been really interesting. I've got all kinds of tabs in here on foreign affairs, climate, public health, criminal justice. So I've, I've come across some things. This is a note with the names of the people who were on my team betting me. So I've come across some things that, that really bring a smile to my face. pictures of my kids that my kids have made for me. So it's some really cool things that I've, I've come across. Well, let me back up. What's interesting about this, I finished probably 95% of the decluttering, but this has been sitting here for about three weeks and I can't finish it. But this is indicative of ADHD, which I learned I have adult ADHD. HD. And I learned this about myself when I was on this journey to just understand more about my kids learning profiles and how they learn. And I started reading um, a bunch of information. I decided to do this self-evaluation of um, adult ADHD. And then were maybe about 10 questions. I answered yes to probably seven or eight of the questions. So I went in and I got my my own evaluation done and sure enough i have it and we think about add and adhd a lot with children and let me be clear i'm not a medical doctor i'm not a psychiatrist or a psychologist i can just tell you what my experience has been and one of the things it talks about is you're very good at getting big tasks done but when you get to the minor details, then it becomes challenging. Well, this is a very good example of that. The big task of decluttering a whole room, I was able to get that done. But now I'm down to the details of sifting through these last few boxes and it's driving me nuts. So I was diagnosed with adult ADHD a few years ago. And for a number of years, I actually took medication for it and it allowed me to really focus. I remember um, uh, at that time I was, I was overseeing the sale of Turner Field. The Braves had just left for the suburbs and it was a very complex real estate transaction. We were selling it to Georgia State University. So I was taking medication at that time which allowed me to really focus on getting that done. And I remember I would wake up like four o'clock in the morning and I would send emails out and uh, it, it was great for that season, but 
it doesn't always allow you to unfocus. I would go on and off of the medication for a while, but I, at some point I realized, especially when I became mayor, I, I need to be able to let some of that stuff go when I came home and I couldn't unfocus. And I would love to know, and maybe somebody who's a psychologist or a psychiatrist can weigh in and tell me, why is it that in professional settings, I'm completely organized and together, but personally, it falls apart. And it may be because I release myself on the personal end. Professionally, I know that I'm presenting outward and I have to keep it together and I do a great job of keeping it together. And maybe I release that pressure on myself when it comes to my my personal stuff but i can also say as somebody with adhd when i'm in an organized environment i do operate better and it it opens up my mind and allows me to think more clearly but what's really been cool i found some of the coolest things going through this stuff i found a uh, a to-do list that i had from 2009 it was really cool what my goals list, what my goals were in 2009. So I wrote this to do, or not to do list, this is, I wrote this goals list, June 16, 2009. I'll just read a few of them. Have an article published in the Essence Magazine. I've been in Essence Magazine a couple of times. Meet President Obama. I've met President Obama and Michelle Obama. Um, I, I guess 2009, this was, let's see, when was he elected? Two, yeah, he was president. He had just been sworn in as president six months before. Appear on Oprah for something positive. I did an Oprah Winfrey special. This was uh, during the summer of 2020. And I was able to talk about the work that we were doing in Atlanta. Write a book. I'm working on my book right now. Uh, research family history. I've done a lot of research on my family history. I've done my Ancestry.com and DNA testing. Fully fund the kids' college funds. I keep working on that because I got one in college and three bringing up the rear. Endow a scholarship at FAMU. I've done that. Write a speech for the first lady slash president. Now this is really interesting you have these visions and these dreams and you think it's for one season it's for something else my goal was just to meet the president and the first lady at that time president obama and michelle obama and when i wrote down write a speech for them i had no idea that i would one day work in the white house this was in 2009 and that i would write, assist writing for the president, that I would work closely with the president and the first lady. And there is um, something in, uh, there's a verse in the Bible that talks about writing the vision and making it plain. I'm so glad that I wrote this down in 2009 because I'm certain I would not have remembered what my, my dreams and aspirations were in 2009 but God has far exceeded all the things that I, I dreamed for, dreamt for, for my life in 2009. And I share that because I, um, we sometimes have these dreams and we put limits around what our dreams are for ourselves. And I remember hearing Oprah Winfrey say, God dreams dreams bigger for us than we could ever dream for ourselves. And I'm a living testament to that. And I'm gonna keep writing down my goals because I want to write the vision, I want to make it plain. And I can't wait to see what else God has in store for me. And if he has not in store for me, I know he has not in store for you too. There's a verse in the Bible, one of my favorite verses, it says he has our names written on the palm of his hand. So he knows us and he calls us by our names. And I can't wait to see um, what he has in store. It's interesting about kids and adults with ADD and ADHD, they're often very, very smart. 
with kids in particular, sometimes their 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 level of intelligence that you observe doesn't always translate into their grades and their schoolwork. So you understand there's a disconnect. It's a little more challenging with adults. Um, and again, for me, it was just all about self-awareness and wanting to understand more about how I operated and how I learned. So there, there are things that I do now that help me stay on task. Keep a lot of notes. I keep a lot of to-do lists and I set parameters around when I do certain things. So I am a morning person, I'm an early riser, and I'm very highly functional in the morning. So if I have really important, important meetings or things that I want to be completely 100% attentive to, I try and schedule them earlier in the day. The later in the day it gets, just my attention begins to wane because I'm physically tired, I'm drained, and on top of that, you know, I'm already dealing with the ADHD part of it. And, and you know, again, this is a, this isn't a great example, this whole mess here. So my badge is city council that sitting on my desk. I've got cards here, Starbucks gift card that I didn't know that I had and just things that need to be purged and put away. So even when I'm working on this project, I have to come down first thing in the morning so I can be fully attentive. But I've also learned by 12 or one o'clock, it's not the best use of my time because then I just kind of start spinning after a while. And this is something, I remember reading something about the author, Toni Morrison, and she said she would get up at five o'clock in the morning and write and then she would stop writing after noon. And that was an aha moment for me. Stop beating myself up if, I'm, if I can't do this at eight o'clock at night. Do it when I know I can get the most output. And you know, again, for me it was good because it helped me understand more about how I operate. I love that I now know, because I didn't know for a very long time. I'm like, why, you know, why am I so scattered, not organized? But again, it's interesting. It doesn't apply to me professionally. I'll probably have to talk to a professional to understand that. And maybe it's I put all of my energy into professional organization. But on the personal side, it can be very, very, very challenging. So now I just operate when I know I can operate best. And for me, that's keeping a list, uh, making sure I do things early in the morning when I'm, I'm most attentive and when I know that I've checked out or my attention is not as focused as it should be, then I release myself from whatever that task is. So the reason this has been three weeks is because I'm doing a lot of traveling right now doing a lot of traveling, speaking in different places, and I just haven't been able to sit back down to do it. But I sometimes wonder again, is you know, is that a part of the ADHD too? I'm doing too many things. So as a lawyer, as mayor, as a judge of working in the White House, there was a more uh, clearly defined schedule that for me, kept me more organized. But now that I get to do things on my own, then I'm doing a lot on my own and not necessarily prioritizing. So, you know, some might say that the speaking should be a priority because it has me working and has me out there. But my husband would say the priority right now should be cleaning up the rest of this stuff. So I'm gonna take some time over the next couple of weeks. And again, this goes back to making sure you keep yourself organized. I gotta put it on the calendar because I have to see this is my allotted time to sit down and finish cleaning this off. Now, again, I've gotten 85, 95% of the purging project done but I'm down to the last little bit. 
And it is just wearing me out every time I walk by and see it. But again, I know what it is because I went through the process of understanding why do I operate like this? Why do why do I, I get so disorganized or unorganized at home? So it's important to get this done and I'm going to put some time on my schedule and I'm going to put it on my to-do list and I'm going to knock it out. I'm going to finish this up because I'm going to put it on my to-do list and I'm going to schedule time to finish it. It's not going to be an afterthought. So some really interesting things that I'm sorting out. They've just sort of been, they've been piled up all over the place and give me two more hours. I'll, I'll be through it and the table will be clear. <laughs> but I got to put it on my to-do list. I got to put it on my calendar. Finish it. See you next time. Happy organizing.